Front wheel bearing replacement is complicated enough that you really need the workshop manual. Look for the chapter on steering and front suspension. Read through the whole procedure. Look at all the pictures and diagrams. Gather up all the tools. Do not rely on just this video to learn how to do this procedure. It's far too complicated. This is just for guidelines. Set your jack under the middle of the axle in the car and remove the hubcap and loosen the lug bolts before you raise the car up. Chalk your wheels and set your jack stands underneath the outside of the axle with the release levers facing forward. The pair of slip joint pliers remove the metal grease cap from the center of the wheel. Move the lug bolts and put them in the hubcap for safe keeping. When you take the wheel off, slide it underneath the rocker panel for an extra measure of safety. To get at the hub assembly, we have to remove the disc brake rotor, which means we have to remove the brake caliper first, which is held on at the bottom and the top by 17 millimeter bolts in a bracket. Use your ratchet and your 17 millimeter socket on the bottom bolt first so we can get that up and out of the way. Use an extension bar with your socket and ratchet so that you can get it past the flexible brake hose at the top of the caliper. Support the caliper with one hand as you remove the upper bolt. You'll also need a wire coat hanger to help hang the caliper from a suspension member or the spring so that it doesn't dangle by the brake hose and damage the flexible rubber line. The disc brake rotor is held on by two of these locator pins that are actually a 12 millimeter bolt. So thread a lug bolt in and then using a pry bar or a long screwdriver to wedge against Use your wrench and socket and pull it off. Now this one's already been loosened, but you may have to apply some force to get them off. Once you pull that out, you can take it by hand and then remove the spacer plate off the end of the disc brake rotor. You may find that the disc brake rotor is on there pretty solidly, so I'm going to use a three-arm puller where I'm going to apply some force to the center of the spindle on the axle and then tap around the perimeter with a hammer until it comes freed up. It should pop right off. Directly behind the rotor is our hub assembly, and as you can see by how much play there is in this, the bearings are really shot. So we're going to take a 27 millimeter combination wrench, put the ring end on it, and we're going to take off that old center spindle nut. Now just behind it is going to be a slotted washer, and as you can see on this one, there's actually part of the bearing cage has come apart. That's how bad these are, and if you look, you can actually see some of the roller bearings uh, have fallen out. So these bearings are well past due, needing replacement. It's actually never this easy. You're going to have to hammer and pry to get that inner bearing and grease seal off and then clean up the spindle from all the grease and grime that you have. Use a wire brush to clean up the hub assembly so that it's nice enough we can start working on the inner bearing races. We're going to use a regular flat blade screwdriver to pry out that snap ring from behind the inner bearing race. Now this is just the same way that the races will come out, kind of straight out the back, but we're going to have to hammer on those and use a punch. We're going to use a two pound hammer and a punch or a brass drift, but always, always wear safety goggles. Don't hammer without them. Place the hub on the floor or a workbench and gently tap around the interior perimeter, working your way around to force that bearing race out of the back. You'll start to see it move, and there'll actually be a small gap that appears. Keep hammering at it, tapping gently all around the edge. Now it's ready to come out. We'll just pop it out with one last shot here. With both the bearing races front and back out, it's time to put the new ones in. Lay them in gently so they're nice and flat, and again, use your punch or your drift with very gentle tapping motion. Work your way around the perimeter. You don't want to force one side in so that it gets jammed against the interior. It takes a little while, but it's worth the effort. Also, you want to be careful not to hit it so hard that the punch or the drift comes loose and puts a big scratch or gouge in the actual bearing race itself. You want that to be as smooth as possible. So let's flip it over. We'll put in the inner bearing race, which is a little bit bigger, but it's the same principle. You're going to set it and just start tapping gently around the perimeter until it seats against the ring inside the hub. Your Fiat 124 Spider comes with tapered roller bearings. They're essentially small steel cylinders that are kept in a lightweight metal cage. 
We're going to add grease to them now. It's called packing the bearing, and don't be shy. Cram as much axle grease in there as possible. It's nothing special. It isn't synthetic. It isn't high-tech or anything, but just cram as much in there over those rollers. Roll them around, squish it in there, and get as much in there as possible. Put some grease inside the bearing races that you put inside the hub assembly, and then insert the bearing into the hub assembly. Put the hub assembly on your workbench with the inner bearings facing up and push your snap ring back in. Use your drift or your punch to gently tap it in against the back. Now you're going to add the grease seal next. Same idea, just use your hammer and gently tap it in so it's even and forced down against the back of that inner bearing all the way around. It's meant to keep all the grease in, hence they call it the inner grease seal. Always use a new one, don't reuse the old set the bearing hub assembly back on the spindle. You may have to tap it a little bit to get it to slide all the way back in, but seat it in as far as you can make it go. Once it's seated, let's put a little grease in the outer bearing race, and then we'll slip the outer bearings in. Make sure you've packed them solidly with grease as well. And then we can put in the slotted washer, and we'll thread on the new axle spindle nut. Always use a new one. Don't reuse the old one. Once you get it set on, use your 27 millimeter wrench to kind of snug it down and pull the hub as far back on the spindle as you can. Now it's time to add the disc brake rotor. As you press it on, make sure you line it and the spacer up with the threaded holes in the hub. Now I'm going to add a little anti-seize grease to the pin locators, the 12 millimeter pin locators, and slide them in and start them finger tight and then snug them down with your opened end wrench. Next, we'll hang the caliper back on its bracket, removing the coat hanger first. You may need a screwdriver to spread the brake pad so that it will slip more easily on the rotor, but putting it on is just the reverse of taking it off. Start the upper bolt first. You can even move the steering knuckle a bit if you want to get better access. Use your ratchet, socket, and extension on the top to clear that flexible brake hose and don't put any kinks in it that might split the line. We've reattached the caliper and we're going to put the wheel back on and thread those lug bolts on finger tight and with our 27 millimeter wrench we're going to tighten and then loosen the center nut. We're going to do this several times as we spin the wheel back and forth and this will help seat the bearings on the spindle. Once we're satisfied that the nut is snug we're going to stake it with a chisel or a punch so that it can't walk. Let's clean the wheel up all the grease and grime that we've gotten from it there. And then we're going to fill that center hub grease cap lots of grease. Remember, grease is the key feature to this whole setup. Put it in there. Don't be shy. Really blurp it on the outer bearing, the outer nut. And there it goes. Release and remove your jack stands from underneath the car. Lower it down. Remove your chocks. Retorque your lug bolts once the car is on the ground. Don't move the car without first pumping the brake pedal several times to reset the pads. This was just a fast overview. Take your time and follow your shop manual. Uh -huh.